Hello, everyone. I know people are just joining, so I'll give folks a couple minutes or a couple seconds here to join. I can see our attendee number climbing. Excellent. Well, thank you everybody so much for being here today. Um, oh, I can take these out. Um, my name is Sarah Cameron. Um, I am Bowdoin class of 2005 and a member of the Bowdoin Alumni Relations Team here at the college. Um, a couple of logistics before we dive right into it. Uh, closed captioning is available at the bottom of the screen. Um, you'll notice that our closed captioning service, uh, it spells Bowdoin incorrectly. So as we are working to fix that, please just feel free to chuckle at that obvious mistake. Um, you can stay up to date on our live and pre-recorded events. We have lots of stuff going on, many events just like this, um, by visiting us online at the Bowdoin Family and Friends website. And we also send out a monthly newsletter, Bowdoin Beyond the Gates, um, and you can find a lot of great information there as well. And we are going to take some questions towards the end of the program. I'll come back on about 10 minutes left to go and we'll start answering some questions. So feel free to use that Q&A box at the bottom. Now a little bit about Chris before I turn things over. We are thrilled to be hosting Chris Toy, Bowdoin class of 1977 for this virtual cooking demonstration. After graduating from Bowdoin, Chris went on to earn a master's degree in teaching from Brown University. He's a retired teacher, principal, and international educational consultant. Chris learned Chinese cooking from his mother in his family's home and restaurant kitchens and has been teaching Asian cooking for 30 years. In addition to teaching at local kitchen stores, Chris teaches adult education classes around Bath, Maine, where he lives with his wife, Joan, who is today's camera woman. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Chris's cooking incorporates straightforward methods, fresh ingredients, and unique flavors, which all draw people together to enjoy great food and one another's company. Um, Chris recently published this book, Easy Chinese Cookbook, um, Restaurant Favorites Made Simple. It's available online at the Bowdoin Bookstore and through most major retailers. Um, it's a great book, so I would encourage you to pick it up. Um, our family has used it a lot already. And you can find Chris online at christoy.net and follow his YouTube cooking channel. So without further delay, Chris. Thanks for that long introduction. Uh, we have a lot to get through. Uh, just a couple things before I really get going, and that is I'll be moving back and forth between uh, different recipes. Um, so um, I'll try not to lose you, but I'm going to try to do all of this inside of an hour. So this could be pretty interesting. I should have thought of that before I uh, decided what I was going to cook. Um, on the uh, menu tonight, um, is an appetizer, which is going to be egg rolls. And um, we're also going to do a, a stir fry with shrimp. And we're going to do one of uh, my daughter's favorite uh, types of chicken. It's a boneless cast iron broiled chicken. And um, I'll talk about each of those as we go along. Uh, the thing that's gonna take a little bit longer is gonna be our rice. So let me talk about that. Uh, my wife likes basmati rice, so that's what we're going to have. And figure on um, a half to a quarter cup per person. And you want to make sure that your pot is at least two thirds more than the volume of the rice and the water so that you can get a, um, get a nice head of steam. And what I want to do is I measure this by touching the top of the rice and it should, the water should just cover the first joint of my index finger. So I need a little bit more water here. So we'll do that. And I just kind of give that a shake so it kind of evens out. Some people say uh, you should rinse the rice. And in the old days, that was absolutely true because there were, you know, critters and um, sand and things like that. But what I remind people today is that a lot of the rice that you, that you eat is called enriched rice. And enriched rice basically means that there have been vitamins that have been sprayed on the rice to enrich it. And so if you rinse it off, you're actually rinsing off the vitamins. So if you're old fashioned, rinse it. 
If you want to keep the vitamins, don't rinse it. What I've done is I put the rice on high. I've covered it up. You want to make sure it's covered. As soon as it begins to boil, we're going to put it on its lowest setting and we will not take the cover off until 15 minutes have gone by because the rice cooks by steaming, not by boiling. So we'll keep an eye on that. And this is why you want the pot to be a good sized pot so that it can get ahead of steam. All right, so that's the rice. So that, that's going. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna marinate our chicken. So I like to use boneless thighs. What I like about thighs is that they have a lot of fat. You can kind of see the marble of, you know, of the fat there. And fat, what I like to say in my classes is, fat is an acronym. It stands for flavor and taste, F-A-T. So we'll get the fat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some very basic ginger and garlic flavoring. And what we'll do is we'll take our garlic, and this is garlic from our garden. So this is nice and fresh. And I just hit that with the side of the, the cleaver. By the way, you gotta have a cleaver. Can't do this with a skinny knife. And then we'll just, just peel that garlic right off like that. And then we'll do the fun part, which is we just take it and we just hit it and slide the, uh, slide the, uh, the cleaver. So we'll break it open just like that. There we go. We'll take the garlic out and we just slide. So we got that and then we'll just, nice about the side of the blade is that it makes it really safe to use because I can use the side of the blade to control that cutting edge. So we're also going to use ginger. And what I like to do with the ginger is just cut it so that the grain is really short. And then we'll just take it and we'll smash that. Once again, just there we go. And you can also use your cleaver as a scoop. Don't cut a hole in your bag. So ginger and garlic for flavoring. So this is going to be essentially a teriyaki type flavoring. All teriyaki is, is salty and sweet. So I've got some soy sauce. Put a bit of soy sauce and some honey in the spring early spring, what I'll do is I'll use some um, maple syrup instead of honey, which is pretty good. And I'm gonna give this a little bit of a kick. So this is sriracha tomato ketchup for a little heat. So you can use your favorite flavorings to make that sauce. And we'll just seal that up. And when you marinate, keep in mind that the original purpose of uh, marinating was to uh, preserve and uh, kill off any bacteria. We don't depend on that now. But what we know is that if you're going to marinate meat, if you want to marinate it quickly, do it at close to room temperature. Not all night, but just for a few minutes, it'll marinate faster that way. Um, and if you put it in the refrigerator, it actually will slow down the marinating process because when you refrigerate fat, it solidifies. All right, so here, this is starting to boil. So let me turn that on to low. And we just, we'll just put that right on the edge. There we go. 
for like um, 15 minutes. And if that keeps boiling, what I can do, as long as I keep that cover on and I keep that head of steam, I can actually turn that off. All right. There we go. Put that on. All right. So our rice will be ready in about 15 minutes. And even though the rice is done, we can just turn it off and leave the cover on and it will be fine at the end of our, our time. So let's get the insides of the uh, egg rolls going. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a nice cast iron wok here and I'm gonna preheat that. And for the filling, what we're going to use is some cabbage that I'm just gonna shred here. Another great use for my cleaver. Chris, we have a uh, question coming in here. What kind of soy sauce are you using? Okay, um, I use something called Wajan San, and um, that's just, uh, that's a kind of a generic Chinese brand, but um, I know that people like uh, Kikoman is good. I, I would recommend that you use um, just a regular soy sauce, not a low sodium soy sauce. Uh, what I found is when I use low sodium soy sauce, I just add more soy sauce because it doesn't have as much flavor. And uh, if, you, if you need to um, go gluten free, uh, there, there are gluten free uh, soy sauces. And all that means is that they've been, um, they've used, they haven't used wheat to, uh, to ferment the soybeans. What I'm doing now is I am shredding up some carrots here and I've got some, some cabbage as well. And we're gonna add uh, some garlic. I'm only gonna need one of these, that's a big one. All right, and some ginger. So the classic flavoring. There we go. Chris, we have a question coming in. Um, yep. Sarah has a stainless steel wok. Should she switch to cast iron? In my opinion, she should switch to either cast iron or carbon steel. Um, stainless steel is okay, but you really can't, um, you can't season it because it's so hard, it's not, it's not, uh, the surface isn't very porous. So it's, a, it's hard to, uh, to do that. Uh, you, you could possibly um, season the cast iron, but you really have to work hard at it. So what I've done is I've put a little bit of oil and I like to use avocado oil because it, it gets hot without burning. And I'm gonna soften up my carrots and some cabbage that's in there with the flavorings. Now here's what's nice about the wok is that any of the oil goes right down to the middle, which is the hottest. So if I push everything else to the side, I can put in my meat. And in this case, I think the recipe calls for, uh, for pork. This only looks like pork. This is actually turkey. So, and if you wanted to, you could go vegetarian and you could get extra firm tofu and you could uh, crumble that up into it. And you can see, I can now mix this in. Stir frying is a dry process. I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
but we're just going to soften this up. All right. Let me turn that off for now. All right. Chris, Doug and Ivy are wondering, should is this a good first Chinese cooking experiment for them? Oh, yeah. Is this a good, easy recipe to follow? It is. It is. Um, I would avoid trying to do three at once. <laughs> Just pick one and, and try that. There we go. All right. So this is just about ready. And what's, what's nice, as you can see, if you look really closely, there's, you don't want a lot of liquid, all right? Because the, um, the vegetables themselves will give some liquid off. All right. So let's let that rest a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about the oil that I'll be using. For the deep frying of the egg rolls, I'm just going to use um, some regular vegetable oil. I don't need to use the avocado oil, which is pretty expensive. But also, um, the avocado oil will get up to 500 degrees before it smokes. So. You, you only want to get to like 350 degrees to deep fry. So just regular vegetable oil is good for that. So let's head over here and I'm going to show you how to roll the egg roll. All right, so um, these you can get right in the grocery store. Uh, they're usually in a refrigerated um, case. And the biggest challenge on these is just getting one. But there we have it. So I like to use a baseball metaphor. I think that's the right word. So home plate, first, second, third, pitcher's mound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a probably three tablespoons of the filling. And I'm gonna put it in an egg roll shape right across pitcher's mound in the infield. All right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt myself a little bit. What I'm gonna do with the rice, just so you'll know, is I am gonna shut that right off. I can keep that covered, and if I did it right, it should be done in a few minutes. So I'm painting the bases with water. Now you want this to be the glue. So use a fair amount of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take first and third, and I'm going to pinch them together right over pitcher's mound. Just like that. Then I'm going to take home plate. I'm going to tuck it up behind pitcher's mound to give it some height. And I'm going to roll the infield up to second base. And there we have one. You want to see one more? Sure. Here we go. Baseball diamond. Some filling. There we go. If there is some water in there um, in the wok because the vegetables don't take the water if you can avoid it. All right, just like that. And then we'll paint around the edges. There we go. And since, you know, second base is where it all gets sealed, just kind of make sure you've got some in second base. First and third, overlap just a little bit. Don't overlap too much, otherwise you'll get a short um, egg roll. Right up like that. And yes, you can make your own egg roll wrappers if you have a pasta machine or if you're really patient and you want to roll it out. But there you have some egg rolls. So let's, let's get ready to cook these guys. All right. So what I want to do is I've got about an inch of oil 
and I want to heat this oil up so it's the right temperature. You don't want it to be too cold. You don't want it to be too hot. So what you'll do is you'll take a wooden chopstick or a wooden spoon or something wooden and you'll just put that right in. And if it's hot enough, you'll see that the bubbles come up around the, uh, the chopstick. All right, don't do this with a plastic chopstick, it won't work. Um, and if it catches fire, it's too hot. But if it doesn't bubble, you've got to let it heat up. Otherwise, the uh, egg rolls are going to kind of hang in there too long. So that's well heated. So what you want to do, and this is just a little trick that I learned after cooking many, many egg rolls. Um, I finally figured out what to do. Before you put it in, you want to flatten it a little bit. And the reason you want to do that is so that when you go to turn your egg roll, it won't go belly up on you. So now what we can do, just like launching at Bath Iron Works, we'll just slide that right in. The oil is hot enough. And just like pancakes, when it turns brown around the edges, see it's turning light brown around the edges? You can just flip that over. And it doesn't have to be really deep because you are gonna be flipping it over. And what, that took maybe like five seconds or so. And then probably two or three seconds. And you'll just kind of look. And that's brown, nice and golden brown. And I have this uh, little tray here, which is great for, um, for draining. It keeps everything warm. And if there's any oil or anything like that, it drips right in. But you'll see, the, because it's only in there for a few seconds, it doesn't absorb a lot of oil. If your oil's not hot enough, it'll have to sit there for a long time. So it's two, three, four, five seconds. We'll just flip that over. Maybe I was a little bit quick on that, but that's okay. Um, a few more seconds on that. Chris, go. if you're making your own egg roll wrappers, what kind of flour do you use? Wheat or rice? And is it no, a recipe like pasta? It's exactly like pasta. Um, so yeah, so use your egg and uh, flour mixture. And uh, I think in, yeah, in my book, I have a recipe for how to make your own uh, wrappers if you want. Um, it, but it would take all the time that we have. So these guys are done. That didn't take very long. I'm going to shut that heat off. And before I bite into those, I'm going to let them cool off a little bit. Let's do a quick um, duck sauce. So duck sauce has no duck. So don't worry about that. And, um, but it was originally made for, um, for cooking duck. So that's why it's called duck sauce. And, uh, what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna take equal parts of crushed pineapple, which is nice and tangy. And you can use pureed whatever fruits you like to do this. And we'll take some applesauce. And if it were uh, fall, we already ate them all, ate it but, um, from last year. But in the fall, if you have homemade applesauce, that's like the best way to go. And what I'm going to add to that is some balsamic glaze. And this is a uh, chili glaze. And you can get this right in, the, in most grocery stores. I'm going to put like maybe a tablespoon right in there. And we'll just mix that up. And that is duck sauce. It's really easy and it tastes really good. And you know what's in it. There's no extra chemicals or anything like that. Um, if you don't have balsamic glaze, you could use regular balsamic vinegar and cut that in half with, um, if you have like a tablespoon of balsamic, put in a tablespoon of brown sugar. So equal parts. But this is good to go. So if this is an appetizer, oh, let me show you this. This is kind of fun. You can, um, when you're going to plate this, these, uh, these, egg rolls. If you cut them at a 45 degree angle, they make perfect scoops. So it's just rude for me to like take a bite. So here's the scoop. I scoop it up just like that. 
Mm. It's good. It's kind of hot, but it's good. Chris, so egg rolls. what about baking egg rolls? Can you do it? And if so, what temperature? You can. And I would do it at probably like four, four fifty, four seventy-five. Because the air doesn't have the same amount of heat transfer as the oil. Um, also, they won't get as crispy. So my my bias would be to uh, would be to fry them, but you can um, spray them with oil and then put them into a preheated oven. All right. So I'm switching over now. Fair warning. I'm going to preheat my uh, oven to 500 degrees and a high broil. And what I'm going to do is I'm switching over. I'm getting the chicken ready. So this chicken is nice and marinated. It's been room temperature. And I've got this nice cast iron griddle. And I have a big one for a few or all here. Well, not all of you, but if you, have, if you have more people, they have bigger ones. But this is a lodge, which is kind of nice. So I think it's a nine inch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna preheat this right up under the broiler. So it's as close as it can get to the broiler um, with room to fit the chicken. And I'm gonna slide that back under there. I'm gonna preheat that so that it gets, so that the uh, cast iron gets really hot. And what's nice about doing that is that the, the cast iron will actually sear the bottom of the chicken or actually will sear whatever it is you're cooking. And then you'll be able to uh, broil the top and you won't have to flip it. You won't have to flip the chicken at all, which is great. While that's heating up, I am going to get my wok ready for some stir fried seafood. So, and um, with, the, with the wok, if it's a well seasoned wok, Really, all you have to do is just wipe it out with a warm cloth, just like that. Easy peasy. And uh, let's heat this up. There we go. When you stir fry, you want to have what's called hot wok cold oil or cool oil, not super cold. And before you start stir frying, you wanna make sure that all of your ingredients are lined up and ready to go. So let's get things lined up. This is really tempting here, sitting here. So let's get our aromatics going. And that's pretty simple. You, you guys know this dance already. So we have some garlic. Destroy that garlic. We have some ginger. And then we'll just pop that up. And by the way, you can grow garlic everywhere pretty much. This garlic is from our garden. So it's already uh, nice and dried and put up for the winter. And you can actually grow ginger. Um, but in, in this area, you need to put it in a pot because it's a tropical plant. So let's line this up. We're gonna put this here, all right? So we're gonna have some onions. So let's make some bite-sized onions. These red onions are nice, they're robust. If you um, don't like onions too much, uh, the yellow onions are a little more mild. So we'll put this over here. Chris, did you peel that ginger? Uh, you don't have to. 
that's uh, yeah. You can you can save yourself a lot of time. You don't have to peel the ginger. Um, you know, you could rinse it off, but uh, you know when you just when you smash it like that and you chop it up, it doesn't really matter. This is bok choy, which is part of the mustard family. It's a very mild cabbage, Chinese cabbage. And what I like to do is I like to cut it at an angle. And when I cut it at an angle, what that does, other than looking cool, it exposes more of the interior of the, uh, of the vegetable to cook. So it cooks faster, and so you don't have to leave it on quite as long. Go and um, let's see pepper. So this is a sweet red pepper, and I'll just you can see it's good to have a. Uh, I don't know if I like this pepper. Joe Leghorn, hi Joe, is asking what are your favorite varieties of garlic. Um, I like, we grow uh, what's called a hardneck, German red hardneck, or is it a German redneck? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, um, it's a good keeper. And what's really great is that it, um, it, the hardneck grows scapes. So in the spring, uh, these scapes pop up and you can uh, use them for cooking. What I'm gonna do with the shrimp is I'm going to peel the shrimp. All right, so this is a medium shrimp. And what I do, and this is where you wanna have a nice sharp, sharp knife, is I cut the shrimp in half like this. And what that does, is it sets the shrimp up so that it curls when you, uh, when you stir fry it. And it makes a little like a, a tortellini, no, not a tortellini, a, a rotini. And what we know about the rotini shape is that it's really good for holding on to sauces. There we go. And uh, these are, these are, um, these are large shrimp. There we go. This one, this one got away. There we go. All right. So let's um, let's do this. And uh, I think it's been long enough on on the rice so that we could live dangerously. And let's look at the rice, all right? Is it gonna be soggy? Is it gonna be burnt? Or is it going to be fluffy? There we go. All right, so the rice works, fortunately. So we don't have to cancel the rest of the class. Wok is heating up. So now I'm going to I told you I was going to be jumping around. I'm going to um, check over on the uh, on the chicken. So let's look at this. So this is the cast iron. All right, and I'm going to check to see how hot it is. So if this, this is avocado oil, just a, just a touch. And if that smokes a little bit. Which it is. That's good. So it's, the cast iron is hot enough. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit more oil. And we'll just kind of brush that on. So where's our chicken? All right, so this is where 
it's good that the chicken is not cold. Put this on. Yeah, that's sizzling, that's what you want. Oh. And we're going to put this right under the broiler. And this will be done in about six minutes, which is about how long it'll take us to do our stir fry. So this is heated up. We'll put in a tablespoon of our avocado oil. Use this guy here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put in our aromatics, which is our ginger and our garlic. Now you have to be ready because if, if I didn't have everything ready and I tried to go get something ready, I'd end up burning things because it literally comes down to seconds in terms of timing. So let's put in our ginger and garlic. We'll get that spread. And as soon as that starts to brown, and it's gonna be the garlic that's gonna to start to brown, we don't want it to burn, because it'll get bitter. Let's put in the thing that we want to cook the next longest, which will be our onions. There we go. And I'm gonna turn on um, the pan here. Just so I don't set things off. It's been known to happen. All right. So, you know, maybe like a minute or so on those onions. Now, the onions aren't done, but the thing to remember is that the onions are going to continue to cook. So, let's put in our peppers. There we go. And really, I just want them to kind of get some flavor there. All right, another minute or so. So this is gonna be the fun part. So here's our shrimp. Okay, so just a reminder, everything that I've put into the wok is at room temperature. What I tell my students is that you got to remember that humans didn't have freezers and refrigerators except for the Eskimos um, for most of the time that we've been here on earth. So all of the traditional recipes do not assume that things are refrigerated. So get the things out of the refrigerator. So you hear that sizzling sound, you want to make sure that that sizzling sound is constant. If the sizzling stops, it means you've overloaded the stir fry. And you can kind of see, see how the shrimp has started to curl. All right. So now we're going to put in, things are going to move pretty quickly now. So the shrimp is almost done. There we go. So now, yep, I just put in the bok choy. And I just really want to just kind of lightly blanch that. So this is going to have a sesame flavor. So what I'm going to do now is let's put in a little bit of soy sauce. So the stir frying, once you start putting in the sauces, the stir frying is done. Because when you put in liquid, it starts to cool things down. All right. And I'm going to put in a little bit of hot sesame oil, a little heat, not too much unless you really love it. 
And then I'm going to make a little bit of a glaze with this. Put in about a tablespoon of cornstarch. And since this is not, we're not trying to make a roux, we're going to depend on the uh, ingredients to break that up. And you're going to see that it immediately creates a glaze. There we go. And we can turn this off. We'll put in our scallions will be a garnish. Go. And a few sesame seeds. And these are black and white ones. You can't buy them like this, but you can buy a bottle of black ones and a bottle of white ones and just sprinkle those guys on. So we've got a nice little nutty flavor there. All right, so I think I've been talking for about six minutes since I put the chicken in. So that's off, that's off. All of my surfaces are off. And let's take a look at the chicken. Oh, oh, oh. Chris, while you're checking the chicken, can you tell us a, um, how to find a good quality avocado oil? Um, so the, the grocery stores are, are actually um, carrying avocado oil. Uh, California avocado oil is, is pretty good stuff. And uh, so I would, I would go with that. Um, if you... If you want, what you can do actually is you can find um, avocado oil blends and um, like avocado and a light olive oil is pretty good. The thing to remember though is that if you mix oils, you can really only use, the, use it at the lowest temperature oil, right? It doesn't like average out. You can't take a, you know, a 350 degree oil and a 500 degree oil and just average it. What will happen is if you try to go to the 500, the 350 will burn. So, so it depends on what you want to use it for. All right. So here's our chicken. And so let's, uh, let's, let's cut into that and you'll see that is done. That is completely done. If it weren't quite so hot, I would taste it, but I, I don't think I'd be able to talk. There we go. And when I, uh, when I slice up the meats, uh, whether I'm using it for stir fry or just to serve, I always cut across the grain. All right, this one here maybe is cool. Uh, this one here. Chris, the email or the recipe that we emailed around to people, um, I think for the stir fry had an egg in it. When do we use the egg and what does it do for the dish? So what you can do with the, uh, with the egg is if you scramble that up, um, you can actually just put that in for the stir fry. So usually that's used with like fried rice. We'll have egg in it. And what you do with the egg is you stir fry it separately and then you put everything else in after the egg has been solidified. Because remember, I told you that stir frying is a um, it's a dry process, so you don't want to put everything in and then put the egg in last. So let's uh, let's plate this just for fun. So. 
with some rice. So in terms of plating, rice is usually your base. So put some rice in there. Here's uh, curly shrimp. It's a little bit spicy. And some chicken. There we go. And I'll take my egg roll here. So let me turn this off. There we go. So Oh, let's turn this off too. Thank you, Joan. Set the house on fire. Everything is off. And um, it actually took me less than an hour oh, with, with some prep. So that's okay. So anyway, let me try this shrimp. Mikey. So there you have it. Egg rolls. <coughs> Sesame shrimp. We had some duck sauce, and we have um, some of my daughter's birthday chicken, cast iron chicken. Excellent. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, a couple questions coming in about the recipes. Um, we emailed some recipes around yesterday to people that had um, pre-registered as of yesterday afternoon. I'll follow up tomorrow um, with um, another email and share these um, recipes that we did. And also we noticed that we forgot a second page of the egg roll recipe that will be necessary. So I'll be following up. Um, and uh, if you did not receive that first email or think that you have been left off in some way, um, please email us at alumni, dot, uh, alumni at edu, and we'd be happy to send those over. So thank you so much, Chris. This was wonderful. I think everybody is probably hungry. I will boldly speak for everyone on the call. <laughs> um, so thank you. And uh, oh, uh, Mary has just tuned in. Um, I will also let everybody know if you'd like to go back and um, reference um, this webinar again or share with family and friends. Um, it will be posted to the Bowdoin website. I'll share that link with you in the email as well. So um, you can go back. Um, stop as you go along and catch up with the chopping and all of that. So, um, but thank you all. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. And most of all, thank you so much, Chris. This was really wonderful. Thank you. Bye.